prakash vel sir and respected joint registrar ms v sangeeta albin madam for having given us an opportunity to organize on day national level workshop on blockchain technologies now i feel very proud to welcome our chief guest dr adri jovin assistant professor senior grade sri ramakrishna institute of technology coimbatore who has accepted our invitation i welcome you sir it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome our deans directors hods faculty members research scholars and participants of various institution on behalf of ahmed deem to be university and the department of information technology i welcome you all to this one day national level workshop on blockchain technologies now i invite ms j janita assistant professor department of it to introduce the chief guest please uh, janita madam yes ma'am yeah yes ma'am hello everyone a warm welcome to all if your actions inspire dream more learn more do more and be more you, you are a leader it is my pleasure to introduce today's presenter dr adri jovin dr adri jovin received his bachelor of technology degree in information technology master of technology in information technology and phd in computer science and engineering from anna university he holds a micro masters in cyber security from rochester institute of technology and has obtained a specialization in applied cryptography from the university of colorado systems he has a few research articles published in various reputed international journals to his credits he has authored a book on computer graphics He was a reviewer for the books Operating Systems Internals and Design Principles Data and Computer Communication and Effective Cyber Security authored by William Stallings He had been a reviewer for international conferences international journals and for IEEE ISO IEC standards He was also a co-reviewer for the ACM IEEE IT 2017 curricular recommendations He was an executive committee member in the IEEE Computer Society India Council and IEEE Education Society India Council from 2014 to 2017. He is also holding the position as director, co-principal researcher at Tol Copier Lab for Tamil Computing. He is the founder of TechnicalTamil.com, an initiative to promote the use of Tamil technical words, which has been certified with Silver Level Community Certificate by the Open Data Institute. As a recognition to his contributions, ACM has honored him as a member of the ACM Future of Computing Academy, an elite group to spearhead the future projects of ACM, and has elevated him as senior member. Let me invite our. Adri Jovin for today's live. Uh, Jovin sir, good evening. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. So let me share the PowerPoint. Okay, sir. Yeah. okay uh, thank you for uh, inviting me for this uh, uh, workshop uh, as a resource person and uh, i am too a uh, learner like you um, all um, and i aspire to learn a lot uh, new about uh, new technologies and uh, coming to the uh, contents of this workshop uh, let us uh, start with this uh, blockchain technologies and uh, this presentation is intended for beginners uh, for those who are new to blockchain technology or just have heard about blockchain technology alone uh, but uh, have it worked out what are uh, have been uh, uh, been exposed uh, to a, to an application level uh, in blockchains and uh, um, it is intended to Uh, help you understand the uh, 
characteristics and uses of blockchain uh, to discuss about the roles and uses in our blockchain uh, to discuss about uh, public and private blockchains and to get enlightened about uh, consensus and need for consensus in blockchain uh, basically uh, when you come uh, to the case of blockchains you need to un have a better understanding on data structures and uh, uh, distributed networks distributed computing and uh, mm, cryptography as well right so uh, these are the core areas where i had worked on uh, during my research my research was basically on agent based intelligence systems and especially to be very uh, specific i was working on mobile agents uh, deploying intelligence to agents and securing them from attacks it was my uh, research work and uh, this blockchain was an extension of this work so, right? and in case of agent based intelligence systems we had the concept of code mobility uh, using mobile agents uh, the code can get trans transferred from one system to another uh, that is if uh, in order to accomplish a number of tasks that are being set to it. For that, we have been using uh, platforms like Jade, uh, Aglets, which are completely Java-oriented uh, um, engines uh, to design mobile agents, to add the mobility to the agents, right? and to transfer the code from one place to another. Later on, in a later period, I came across the concept of this Bitcoins. Bitcoins was a very is a very significant use case of blockchains right? um, before most people might have uh, uh, heard this buster blockchains only after having heard the uh, term bitcoins bitcoins became that um, popular uh, in the recent ages right and uh, this is a completely decentralized organization we have come across uh, a number of uh, systems like the 3 j architecture, we have the client server architecture, the peer to peer architecture, etc. And this is a sort of peer to peer architecture. <clears throat> right? And uh, it has a distribution of authority. Each and every person uh, in a blockchain network holds the responsibility of preserving the blockchain. Right? And uh, Similarly, in case of agent-based intelligence systems, I also had the, this uh, sort of similarity. And uh, when you take the case of agent-based intelligence systems, we have we had three parts, namely the code, state, and data. But in case of blockchains, we have much more entities to be described, um, which we will see in the forthcoming slides. Right? Initially, it was a uh, 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 when you take the case of uh, blockchains, it is something that is coming out of a distributed ledger technology, where uh, the ledgers for, which were used for computation were placed in different locations. And uh, uh, this was the core for crypto economy. So uh, economy that is not much governed by the governments of countries and are uh, uh, much uh, uh, much nourished and developed by uh, open source developers, right? So, you take the care statement of Naval Ravika the arc of the internet is now bending towards decentralization. When internet came into being, we had the particular uh, concept called client server architecture right every client has to put a request to the server and the server has to deploy the uh, the server has to give you some sort of response and you you were completely relying on the server for a number of uh, uh, tasks to be accomplished but this had led to a concept of what we call single point failure because of which we had to go on with the distributor systems right? um, so in that case you, you take a mirror even if you are maintaining a server possibly the administrators or the network administrators or the system administrators in the university knows that if any server fails they have a backup of 
the data in some other server so the, you have a graceful degradation of the, of the um performance of the system right so this had led to something called decentralization of this For most uh, probably everyone must have used this particular technology called torrents right um, so if you are very familiar with the torrents um, <clears throat> you might have known that only the torrent file will be available in the server whereas all the parts of the uh, end outcome will be present in some other systems probably if i am uh, trying to download uh, some particular software uh, a software which is uh, divided into 100 pieces possibly it is not possible to transfer a complete software within us within milliseconds to your system uh, it is <clears throat> received as packets right uh, thousands or uh, millions of packets uh, get into and outside my system every second so uh, if i if the particular software for an example if the particular software is uh, uh, divided into some 100 pieces i may have downloaded some 10 or 15 pieces already and i am trying to download some other pieces probably some other server some other client might be uh, <clears throat> trying to download the um, same software from some other location right so he will be getting access to my 15 pieces of software whereas if he has some other uh, piece of software which is in extra uh, compared to that of mine i can download it from him you know this is the architecture of uh, what you call the torrent this uh, a layman uh, description of uh, what you call the torrent system torrent protocol but uh, there are a lot of things uh, that are going on uh, behind uh, in it technically speaking right and uh, so here the rights are given to the users and this this were uh, this deployed computer security engineers applied cryptographers and distributed system engineers to uh, develop this type of system <clears throat> right and when you take the case of a distributed ledger as most other technologies it is also it is also a data structure right it is a way in which you are storing the data whenever you are hearing the term data structure it is a specialized way in which data is being stored right so this this contains these blockchains and smart contracts etc as its sub modules and it has three basic components that are a data model a language for transaction and a protocol right so you have a data model which maintains the current state of the ledger right or what is the data uh, there may be a number of data as well as metadata that may be stored inside a ledger. If you are uh, going through the um, documentation of uh, some blockchain technologies, you can understand what are all the data being stored in it to maintain the state of the data, right? <clears throat> uh, so maintaining the state of the data is uh, quite a yeah, very challenging task, right? Uh, that depends on the application where you work with right uh, and uh, a language is required for the transaction in uh, while i was uh, working with uh, mobile agents i used java as the programming language where on a framework like aglet or jade helped me for the mobilization right here we have uh, some language like solidity which helps which is specialized uh, you can deploy a DLT in any programming language, it is possible, right? But uh, there is a framework which can ease your task of deployment, right? There are a number of uh, uh, computation that is available to process data, but when you take the case of uh, the libraries like PyTorch or uh, TensorFlow, 
the is the uh, process right uh, you need not to care much about the algorithm that is underlying it so yeah. there are certain certain languages that would help us in this uh, in achieving this particular task right and uh, similar being a new thing it requires uh, which is deployed over a distributed system it requires some protocol for operation so when i when we were working with the agents we were working with a protocol called atp uh, in general we have in a network definitely you will be using http right hypertext transfer protocol which <clears throat> which is responsible for I, I loading the web page in a browser similarly if you want to transfer some file you will require ftp so i wanted to transfer agents so i required atp agent transfer protocol here we have some other protocols underlying to help uh, uh, or to build the consensus consensus is a agreement mechanism in in uh, general term uh, you can say it is an agreement between the process so this protocol e in general is used to create an agreement between systems that are communicating with one another right so if i need to communicate with you i with some person who knows english as well as hindi but uh, do, do not know tamil then i have to converse with him in english so i have to uh, understand the language and i have to devise a mechanism to uh, get in touch with him right so that is what is done by a protocol right so now coming to the concept of uh, blockchains to the very concept of blockchains so, so it is a peer to peer distributed ledger it is a peer to peer uh, distributed ledger already we have seen that uh, a ledger is a distributed entity which contains uh, three components one is the data second is the language and uh, the protocol now this is a peer to peer distributed ledger yes distributed ledger itself is a peer to peer one and is posed by consensus there are a number of sub use cases of a distributed ledgers right of which blockchains <coughs> are highly bound to consensus algorithms right there must be some consensus algorithm because most of the blockchain are deployed in public and is anonymous that anyone can the transactions are not anonymous the users can be anonymous right you can be a user i can be a user you may not know who i am or i may not know who you are but you and i are the part of a same process right so there need to be some sort of agreement with, between people right and it is combined with a system probably you may go on with a transactional system or a monetary based system or a uh, system where we will we will uh, see some of the applications uh, in a very shallow perspective uh, about blockchains right uh so this is used for uh, applications that establish trust accountability and transparency so one of the uh, core properties of a blockchain which we call immutability which we will be discussing in detail in the future right uh, immutability ensures the existence of blockchains as a technology there are a number of technologies that handle money transactions right uh, in banking they use a number of technologies that handle money transactions but when you take the case of a blockchain based transaction network like a bitcoins you cannot deny something for example for a particular task i give you a bribe of rupees for of some 1000 rupees to some person and he also gets it through a bit bitcoin network in near future when there arises a litigation against me for having bribed a person and 
or him for getting a bribe both of us cannot deny the concept if i deny then what happens i will let you know see if i nullify one transaction in my blockchain network in my blockchain network if i nullify one transaction my entire transaction will get nullified right so if i delete the event of having transacted with thousand to some person even if i have crores of money in my bitcoin wallet it will become zero right if i try to delete so that is the power of these blockchains so it is a read only as well as a write only type of uh, transaction happening and some of the application domains where blockchains are deployed today or goods transfer um, that is for supply chain a digital media transfer so for a sale of digital arts right yeah, it's uh, used in so these are uh, these application domains or something which i had gone through browsed through some sites some websites which uh, which uh, really what blockchains right and uh, for a kind information most of these are about to be deployed in dubai right uh, dubai is uh, getting boomed with uh, a number of technologies and uh, dubai is going to be a blockchain managed uh, or governed um, city in some five or six years so they are working on it uh, very recently uh, there were a lot of people uh, who were deployed for this particular process and uh, i personally had known some person who was who was working with hdc as a consultant uh, he has gone to dubai for the deployment of blockchain uh, in their governance system right mm -hmm. so these are all some of the applications as a decentralized business logic so moving computing to a data source just like what happens in cloud and uh, related systems uh, distributed intelligence for education credentialing so nowadays uh, we must uh, we must be obtaining some sort of badges or some sort of uh, credentials so from professional uh, or professional certification uh, from industries like microsoft or oracle so for this type of educational credential education credentialing you can use uh, blockchains similarly for distributed resources like power generation and distribution power grids can be completely uh, governed by blockchains similarly for crowdfunding uh, for example if you want to start uh, want to start a startup uh, so when you take the case of uh, um, getting money from foreign agencies there are a lot of procedures but when you take the case of uh, blockchains so since uh, with a caution no time say since it is not yet governed by the um, government uh, you can get your amount as bitcoins right there are strong regulatory um, classes that govern the usage of cryptocurrencies in india so it is it is still not completely governed by uh, the government of india or the rbi but they have also not prohibited the use of bitcoins or uh, coins like doge coin ethereum coins etc but it has not been regulated by the government so far so it it will take some time for us to adapt that particular technology whereas some other countries have already started uh, deploying cryptocurrencies for example you must have uh, recently heard that bradley had sent his uh, aid to india in as bitcoins right so australia is working on bitcoins right they they have legalized bitcoins but in india it is neither legalized nor yeah illegal one right 
so it is in a very hypothetical state and electronic voting so uh, nowadays uh, people have started uh, working on it and very uh, recently one of my students uh, did a project to it but uh, to an elementary level only the project is uh, getting into uh, so very recently you must have heard uh, that our chief election commissioner the pharmacy chief election commissioner uh, sushil arora uh, said that uh, there there can be there will there shall be a possibility of having one election in this nation one election throughout the nation in a single stretch you can have an election and anyone can vote from anywhere so if such a thing need to be managed you require uh, technologies like blockchain so uh, without the advent of these type of technologies it might not be possible for us to deploy <clears throat> real time challenge or work out on real time challenges and similarly identity management one id for all life functions that is uh, today we are having other other is basically not working on uh, blockchains so rather uh, there may be a scenario where other might be put into um, might use this particular blockchain technology and uh, for open governance now uh, we can go on with so definition of coming to the definition of blockchain a blockchain is a peer to peer distributed ledger forged by as i said earlier forged by consensus combined with a system for smart contracts and other assistive technologies there are a, these are not just a simple uh, these are the domain of blockchains is not restricted with these type, these technologies alone there are a number of terms there are a number of things that are underlying it only if you are going into it so deeply uh, you can understand what are the specific constraints right so here there are two terms one is smart contract and the other one is consensus right these two terms are even new for some people right um so smart contracts are just computer programs that execute predefined actions when a particular condition is met so if you have given this much of amount you can purchase this particular thing right this is a condition right so this will be bound inside a uh, blockchain right so now uh, for, for writing all these conditions uh, probably if we get some time i i can try to uh, show you the same uh, how it is uh, getting deployed in ethereum blockchain platform okay, using the solidity language um, but even if you are not getting time you, you can just go through the uh, references which i have quoted in this particular presentation to get uh, much about it to know much about it right and consensus refer to the system of ensuring that parties agree to a certain state of the state system as a true state so uh, there are a number of parties involved so this is a open network right it is a open network and every transaction that is made over the network is accountable who who will make it accountable so being a open network will make it accountable so there are some parties probably some miners if you are taking the case of uh, bitcoins or ethereum we call we have a term called miner m i n e r miner one who mines coins right those people take the responsibility of uh, setting a true status of stating that this is a valid transaction so there are certain conditions uh you, we cannot in a at a stretch make a transaction over, over a blockchain there are certain conditions only if those conditions are met with and is endorsed by all these people it it can be ag agreed to get into the blockchain otherwise it will not be allowed into the blockchain right so 
there is a very uh, big confusion uh, between uh, blockchain and uh, bitcoin right bitcoin made blockchain popular you cannot deny the fact that uh, blockchains had been existing for a very long time but bitcoin made it much more popular and it is one of the major innovations of uh, blockchain right and bitcoin was uh, still now no one knows who the inventor of bitcoin is right and uh, the inventor of bitcoin is known by the name satoshi nakamoto satoshi nakamoto it may be a person or a group of person so they were not ready to uh, reveal their identity and still the bitcoin network goes on right it is an anonymous open public network and it goes on and it is a continuously working digital currency 24 by 7 it is working and uh, there is no downtime it is going on it is going on and mm, so even uh, some two or three days back we received a notification from most of the banks that because of the uh, maintenance work in NEFT, we are not you may not be able to transfer via NEFT for a particular day and uh, some two or three months back because of amalgamation of two or three banks we will not be able to make the transactions for three or four days so i was an indian bank customer and i suffered a lot for those three days but when you take the case of bitcoins it is not so right it it, it works on so no one is governing it but it works on right this is the power of a blockchain so there is no one who is working on it so when you come to a deeper perspective and so when you take the case of a blockchain so we will further discuss about uh, uh, bitcoins as well as ethereum also ethereum also why because these are the major open source uh, um, open source uh, blockchains where anyone can work with right but you require some sort of software like honeymoon or something and uh, you must have that much power uh, in your system right if you are using softwares that are relevant to blockchains especially mining softwares if you are using you can feel the heat in your system right it will take off the maximum power and there are a number of people who are really earning a lot out of it they create rigs of gpus right they create rigs of gpus and use it for mining purpose so your computational power is its investment that your computational power is its investment and you you can start there are a number of videos available in youtube how you can start investing in bitcoins or ethereum or dogecoin or maybe if you are really interested in making uh, such type of uh, investments you can go on with it because uh, blockchain is a open thing and is it possible many of you uh, may ask is it possible to and uh, get it back as a currency which we are using today like euro or usd or inr right indian rupee yes it is possible it is possible there are agencies that uh, convert the bitcoins to your local money and give you back but there are some uh, transaction charges uh, some service charges and you have to bear with it and now coming to the blockchain we have four pieces of metadata one is darpa it is almost similar to you can just visualize a linked list uh, in data structures it has a reference to the previous block right or the next block and what or maybe so in general yeah, if you are taking a particular block in we will we will see, see that uh, in the forthcoming slides no you so let me not confuse you with the yes, you, it will have a reference of the previous block that, that will be considered an originating block and next is a proof of work also known as a nonce okay, there, there is some nonce that is being created and 
that is considered to be proof of work i will let you know how this this particular concept works in creating a transaction or validating a transaction or creation of a block right next we have a timestamp value so timestamp will be in utc universal um time code right uh, so it will be in utc and we are in utc plus 530 uh, right and we have a merkle tree root for the transaction included in this block right so we will come across this merkle tree data structure also in the forthcoming slides right so when you take the case of uh, um, blockchain the most important property a blockchain process compared to that of most other data structures is that it is immutable right this is whenever you are talking about the blockchains you have to talk about immutability right it is the salient feature of a blockchain there may be a number of features that are available in most other technologies also but immutability is the salient feature that is available in blockchain if your data is tampered any other anywhere in the chain link will break and it is just like a, uh, a block that is chained with another block another whatever you store you put it in a whatever you save you put it in a box right and once the box gets filled you close the box put a chain and uh, attach another box with it right once again you start saving you put it in the box and goes on right so this is the case. similar uh, case can be uh, seen in a blockchain also so this provides not only immutability but also security so that's the reason why if you are making a malicious Uh, you are seeking a blockchain with a malicious intent you may not get a lot from it and very little number of attacks are uh, from you know blockchain right and um, when you come for the transactions each and every event is being recorded and it is secured using a digital signature which is verified and bundled together into blocks whenever you are uh, creating a block you need to imprint your digital signature also so this helps you to um, maintain the identity as well as you cannot uh, it ensures the property of uh, non repudiation you cannot deny that you didn't make it right if, if you are a party who is net but still there are anonymous transactions you can uh, get into the transaction at any time you can leave the transaction at any time but you cannot uh, say that leaving the transaction will uh, destroy your records right even if you leave the transaction your records will be available there with your digital signature you have worked with it that's all right and uh, cryptography has a key role to play both in security as well as and the immutability of the amounts especially the techniques of hashing right hashing as well as merkle tree hashing it is also one of the hashing mechanisms only uh, but it uh, it is represented in in a different term right so we will when we are discussing about merkle tree we will come across it and <clears throat> and uh, for security purposes you will be using uh, ecc in both uh, if you are taking the case of ethereum as well as uh, bitcoin they will be deploying uh, elliptic curve cryptography so um, i will i will say, uh, say the reason in, uh, in the forthcoming slides right so why not uh, databases why blockchains right so databases can be easily modified and deleted so if you have uh, admin access or if you are uh, uh, very good in network security so 
what you can do is you can just uh, um, make a SQL injection attack, right? But when you take the case of blockchains, it is a write-only data structure. You can write. It is possible to read, but it is not possible to modify. You cannot open things in a processed data. Once a record is closed, it is closed forever. You cannot get into it once again. Uh, you, you cannot uh, do a lot of things, right? And uh, when you take the case of blockchains, it is completely decentralized, whereas the databases are centralized applications. So some may claim that uh, some part of the database may be here and some part of the database may be there and you are making some sort of joins and uh, collaborating with the tables from different systems uh, uh, to access data that is uh, decentralized, but it is not so. Uh, the data is collectively in a cluster of servers. Even if you are taking the case of any network service provider, they have a cluster of servers, which we call the forest. Right? Uh, so there will be a domain, there are forests, etc. Et uh, these terms are long to, much long to uh, the system administrators. But when you take the case of blockchains, each, it is a completely decentralized application. Right? But you will be a part of it at, yeah, in, at an instance, and you you can leave at any time. So when you take the case of a blockchain, when you take the structure of a blockchain, <clears throat> the building block of a blockchain is the transactions. The transactions made by the <clears throat> users are the building blocks of the blockchain. Then all these transactions are put into a block and after consensus and verification it is it is formed into a blockchain right so this is the basic mechanism so first of all you have transactions then you have the transactions are composed into a block and the blocks are composed into blockchains right and the components of a blockchain may be a ledger which is a distributed immutable historical record, a peer network which stores, updates, and maintains the ledgers. So data need to transfer through some mechanism, right? Some technology is required for data to get transferred from one system to the other, right? So that is done by a peer network. Then we have membership services like user authentication, authorization, etc. Right? And then we have smart contracts that those are programs. So you just assume that a blockchain is a platform for which you are having a programming language to deploy certain applications. Right? This programming language is called smart contract. Right? And valid where user credentials are stored then you have events so each and every event that is done over a blockchain is documented each and every event is documented then you have systems management like component creation modification and monitoring so components are different from blocks please understand components are different from blocks this doesn't have much significance in blockchain technology but there need to since uh, there are some uh, this constitute one of the part of uh, the blockchain we use this terminology right and system integration so integration of the blockchain with the external systems so even uh, there are some very recently i uh, i read an article where the supply chain management is completely managed by a, a company called consensus so we here we study about consensus a company called consensus works on supply chain management uh, using blockchains right and uh, coming to coming specifically to one of the use case of uh, blockchain that is bitcoin so in a bitcoin <clears throat> we call the basic entity as unspent transaction output utxo right it is the it is nothing but a transaction you just uh, 
Uh, if you go, if the ter terminology is used by most computer science professionals will be uh, like something very big, but uh, the concept uh, is very small, right? So it is just a transaction, but we will use the term unspent transaction output, right? Because uh, it is not spent, it is stored. That's the reason it is called unspent transaction output. And every block in a Bitcoin has a reference number, right? Every block has a reference number and it can have one to n inputs and one to m outputs, right? So one input can provide you with the two outputs or 10 inputs can provide you with one output. Uh, everything will be stored in a bell in the block. And UTXO uh, contains uh, the common, these are the components of the UTXO. That is the unspent transaction output, right? UTXO is the, so it looks uh, like a technical term, UTXO. It, it adds some beauty to the term. That's the reason why uh, terms are uh, coined that way, right? Uh, so unique identifier of the transaction will be available. An index for the transaction will be available and the value that is being transacted will be available and optionally the condition under which these output can be spent will be available because these are unspent transactions. Right, these are unspent transactions under which condition this can be spent, right. Then when it comes for uh, the transaction, so UTXO we have seen Next, when it comes for a transaction, it has a reference number, right? The transaction transacts the UTXOs, right? It has one or more input UTXOs and one or more output UTXOs that are processed by the current transaction. And the total input and output amount will be there. So this is a sample transaction. So here you can see one input UTXO. So this was uh, logged today morning at 7 1 a.m. Okay, today morning at 7 1 a.m. Uh, I love this. The timestamp is also there. The transaction was first broadcast to Bitcoin network on May 26, 2021. So it has not been put into a block so far. That's the reason why it is said to be an unconfirmed transaction. Right. Uh, the transaction is currently unconfirmed confirmed by the network only when after it is getting confirmed by the network right only it is getting confirmed by the network it will be added to the block so for that there is a mechanism so for that purpose only we have the process of consensus okay now uh, you can see one input UTXOs and it is processed into two UTXOs two output UTXOs Right. Uh, if you take the sum, there will be it will be almost equal, right? And uh, what is the fee for this particular transaction? The miners will be getting this particular fee, right? The miners will be provided with this uh, fee. That's the reason why people use help in mining. You they will just install. So if you are having a computer with a normal configuration, please don't try with any uh, mining operation so your computer may get hanged right if you're having a very good uh, uh, graphical processor unit or if you're having some other old computer where you can work uh, work with uh, without any problem or uh, you even you will not care about e even if it uh, goes wrong if something goes wrong even if you don't care about it then you can go on with uh, softwares like honeymoon or um, uh, in crypto, etc. Right, um, right. Okay. Next is the total amount being spent. Right. This is the total amount being spent in this transaction. Right. In the next slide, you can say, see the hash of the value, then its status, whether it is confirmed or not, its size and uh, its uh, memory pool what is the total input and what is the total output, right? What is the fees that is being uh, used? 
uh, when you take the total output and the, if you add the total output and the fee you will get the total input right and uh, what is the fee per byte all those data will be available here and what are all the inputs you can see the same values here right 3j it starts with something like the 3j and ends with something like wd and here also so everything will be available in a blockchain right so you you can just you too can just explore this if you are going to a site like blockchain.info right you, you you can uh, note it if you want to if you are really interested in it you can just go and see it is now changed to blockchain.com i think right uh, so if possible i shall share the link of the uh, site uh, in the uh, chat window so each and every transaction is transparent anyone can see it but you will not know who which party did this that's the only thing which party did the transaction you will not know but you will come to know what that what transactions have happened you can verify at any uh, instance right and uh, right from the deployment uh, now coming to the block so this is a block this was taken at uh, uh, 6a right uh, see uh, here you have the block number so this will also be available in the same site at one end they will be displaying the transactions and at the other end they will be displaying the uh, blocks so every block will be having a link to uh, other block right and you can see that here you have a merkel root right here you have a merkel root this is Understand. There is something called a Merkle root. So this is the root node of the Merkle tree. The summation of all the values in the leaves constitute the root node of the Merkle tree. Right. For our understanding, we will see about it in future also right so these are all the transactions that have made this particular block so this i have just uh, taken a gist of the transaction there are more than 10 or 20 pages this is just a half of a page right it's just half of a page which i have taken and you can see there are three confirmations three confirmations three confirmations for this transaction to get approved whereas in the previous one we couldn't see any confirmation it was unconfirmed right here you can find that there are three con confirmations right so if if and only if the people the uh, miners confirm this transaction it will be added to the block and Un no unconfirmed transaction will be added to the block so there are reasons why these unconfirmed transactions need not be added up to the block because if there is an unconfirmed transaction right there is an unconfirmed transaction that is definitely going to be a threat to immutability whenever you think if you can insert something and whenever you think if you are you can delete something then it won't form the uh, if the uh, then blockchains are meaningless right that's the reason why only confirmed uh, transactions are uh, allowed here or allowed to make the block and why the miners are provided with a mining fee right now coming to the role of participants there are basically two types of participants one is the user and the other one is the miner right users are people who can invest right who can put money over it and transact values uh, by creating transaction right you can transfer values that is you are transferring for example i am having 10,000 rupees i transfer 800 rupees to 
some yes or why that can be done by me but who is going to maintain the entire blockchain for the entire blockchain to be maintained someone needs some incentive right if you are not given an incentive you will not uh, work for it right there are a number of transactions that are happening over a blockchain so for each and every transaction if you are giving some sort of a, uh, endorsement so you and a group of people you there are there are some sort of consensus algorithms that require n number of votes out of k number of participants is required for a transaction to be invalid to be valid right always it will be invalidated the transaction will not happen right uh, it will be destroyed it will be staying as a unconfirmed transaction right for the maintenance this incentive is being given right that is the case of miners miners verify the transaction they broadcast the transaction once they verify it they announce it to everyone right because of that only uh, that blockchain.com site is having that transaction uh, history right they announce it to everyone and they compete to create a block so creating a block is not a ordinary thing because for verification of transaction you get a very small incentive right for uh, i think in uh, ethereum blockchain for verification of uh, um your transaction you will be getting around 200 uh, gas points right whereas if you are creating a block you will be getting 2100 uh, gas points see here there it is it is uh, almost uh, 10 times right so people will compete to create a block <clears throat> and then you reach consensus by validating a block right yeah secondly after creation of a block it need to be validated even after creation of a block it may not be validated right it may not get validated <clears throat> there are certain condition there are certain cases where the block may not get validated uh, so we call we have a concept called to double spending uh, double spending so uh, like it is like uh, what do you say so uh, you have booked for a ticket in a bus right two people have booked for the same seat okay. so this is called a double spending they pay the amount uh, mr h also pays 250 rupees and mr y also pays 250 rupees for the same seat that is b1 right at the time of um, uh, travel only one can sit in b1 no uh, both people cannot sit on the same seat so at the time this is a problem basically sometimes this happens this happens in real life also so sometimes it is unavoidable right uh, if the if there's a bug in the system right or two people work for the same goal right the one there must be some sort of mechanism that enables people to <coughs> validate right for example uh, what we call uh, for example you take the case of uh, uh, this this happens every year uh, in tamil nadu engineering admissions examination two people will be having same marks right two people will be having the same aggregate score and there will be only one seat available in college of engineering bd here seen right there is only one seat but two of them have the same mark what will happen next either their age may be taken or their name may be taken or some lottery mechanism may be deployed right a lucky draw may be deployed to end the tie that happens in uh blockchain all in this blockchain also right mr once you 
create a blog you have to broadcast that you have created a blog everyone in the network must know that you have created a blog then you have to confirm it only after that it will be put into the blockchain right so now creating a blog so if your transaction is added if it is rejected no issues now you have to check whether it is a valid transaction yes it is validated it is a once you are making a transaction it it remains unconfirmed right there are two stages now now you have you have made a transaction and now there are two stages one is either it should be confirmed or it should be rejected right so if it is rejected the use case ends that that way no issues if it is selected it is confirmed then it will be put into the pool of unconfirmed transaction right there is a pool of unconfirmed transaction then all these unconfirmed transactions will be which are valid one right if it is a invalid one it will be rejected which are valid ones will be collected to form a block now minus there will be a number of miners who will be competing to solve a puzzle there will be a task so it requires some sort of computational power to solve the task so that's why when you are putting a software like honey miner in your system it will solve the task it is uh, made ready to solve the task but what happens is they take the energy from your system they take the energy from your system right so the computational power of your system is being utilized to solve that and they give you a meager amount so probably if they are getting 100 rupees for a transaction they will give um some 10 or 20 rupees because they are utilizing your resource right so that is how people usually earn in uh, using bitcoins right and then the so minus uh, here compute to solve the puzzle and the solved block is broadcasted now it need to be verified once the uh, block is verified for its consistency then it will be added to the chain and it will be confirmed right now coming to the types of blockchains based on applications there are three types of blockchains so uh, there is another one type of uh, blockchain based on its accessibility uh, this is a basic uh, comparison right um say when you are taking the case of blockchain we have only token type of blockchain right uh, that is one typical example is bitcoin it, it, the purpose is only currency it, it is it has a monetary value it, it is used for monetary transactions mm -hmm. uh, similarly you have nowadays uh, touch coin is very famous it, it comes around 21 touch coin is around 21 rupees or, uh, so and one bitcoin is around 38000 rupees i think uh, if i am correct uh, so these are useful exclusively for cryptocurrency applications now uh, when it comes for currency and business logic you can go on with uh, blockchains like uh, ethereum right uh, though using which you can build applications ethereum is a platform using which you can build applications as well as make transactions both are in the same platform but there are uh, there are sub versions of it uh, um, only if you are uh, really in working on ethereum you will come to know about it and uh, only business logic like hyperledger hyperledger is only for business logic there are uh, different versions in there too uh, this ethereum also right uh, that is a sa to etc there are a number of version they build applications based on this <coughs> right and it is interoperable with most of the cryptocurrency standards and so when it comes for blockchains so, uh, classification of blockchains we have another classification also that is which is completely access based so um, usually when you are uh, 
<coughs> uh, studying OOPs, object oriented programming. Uh, you have studied about public, private, etc. Right? Uh, the similar case uh, appeals here also. Right? Um, here also we have public blockchains, private blockchains, and permission blockchains are um, we call consortium blockchains. Consortium blockchains. Right? Um, see, the public blockchains. Uh, one of the best example is Bitcoin. It is publicly accessible. Any person can access at any time, any instance. You can get in, get out, uh, whatever you want, you can do. And when it comes for private blockchains, it is specific for a specific organization. So Hyperledger provides certain solutions which can be deployed within your organization alone. For example, in your result processing or potential management, if you want, uh, if your university wants, uh, data to be uh, processed using uh, within its scope, no public intervention should be there. Then you can go on with the uh, private blockchains. And uh, we have permission to blockchains. Permission blockchains or consortium blockchains. So, for example, uh, at your university, uh, you may be doing your own admissions as well you may be relying on some consultants for admission right so you will be providing the access to your own faculty members as well those consulting member those consultants will be provided with some access rights right so now anyone can access this one but only those who are provided with the permission can work on this particular blockchain that is the significance of permission to blockchains it is a public one but have a private access right so this is that this is another classification right and when it comes uh, here uh, explicit uh, comparison between uh, bitcoin and ethereum right so in bitcoin you have a wallet or exchange application, right? You, you may be deploying some of what I said, like Honey Miner uh, application, like uh, Honey Miner or uh, Mine Me Up, like that, right? Under which you have the Bitcoin blockchain protocol. It will be having its own protocol, right? Blockchains usually don't share the same protocol. Each type of blockchain will have its own protocol and operation. But the peer-to-peer -peer network and the operating system uh, layer and the hardware layer remain the same for both of them, right? You can deploy it over the same uh, operating system or the peer-to-peer -peer network or the same hardware, right? When it comes for the Ethereum blockchain, you can observe that there is an end-user application. That, that's the reason why I stated that it is a currency plus business logic based blockchain. Right, it is a currency and business logic based on blockchain. Right, so for currency purposes, you can use these frameworks and uh, smart contracts, frameworks like smart contracts and uh, other things. But uh, the, ultimately, you will be having end user application. For example, land registration can be uh, done using Ethereum. Right, um, so smart contract application will be done accordingly. A digital signature can be. Uh, imported over it nowadays uh, we are having online uh, registration system right so your other number is uh, used for creating the digital signature for a digital signature there uh, it requires a private key so that is the so some private key need to be taken either maybe your mobile number or your uh, other number some private key need to be given from which your public key will be generated and distributed to everyone and based on that things will go on and now coming to the ethereum blockchain we have the ethereum blockchain and the ethereum virtual machine so here we call it a evm in india we have electronic voting machine it is also called evm uh, let us not confuse it with this evm so because uh, usually when you are taking the case of uh, people related to computer science or information technology they will be familiar with the jvm 
Java virtual machine. Similarly, in Ethereum, we have the Ethereum virtual machine and a language that is works on it is Solidity. Right? It is converted into the business logic using the Ethereum virtual machine. And we have the peer to peer network and the operating system uh, similar to that of the Bitcoin, the bottom layer as well as the hardware. Right? So, when it comes for the smart contracts, a smart contract is a uh, is just like a class, right? a class in object oriented programming. Right? Uh, so, when you are taking the class, you know, it will have data as well as functions, right? data as well as methods or, or functions. Uh, so, depending on your programming language or the type of uh, uh, application, you would uh, meet function or method with the modifier. Modifier is uh, uh, like um, Hmm. You you are giving some privileges to this particular function, whether it's private or public or something like that. And along with that, you have the get getter and setter functions in a smart contract. And solidity, solidity works on Ethereum virtual machine (EVM). Right, it's a programming language which is specifically designed to execute smart contracts. Right, it is a uh, specific is a specific language so if you are going to ethereum site or just uh, browse in google for solidity uh, you will be put into the site into the website of solidity where you can write your own program right the only thing is you have to understand the core logic the syntax and semantics of the programming language and you can write it of your own uh, thing is that a uh, smart contract contain the data so the solidity supports this provision because of which it is highly used uh, in blockchain and when it comes for uh, security so sec being now very open network you have to be very careful about security right uh, so both the uh, algorithms sorry sorry both the blockchains platforms use elliptic curve cryptography rather than using RSA. When you are taking the case of banking applications, most of the banking applications uh, as well as payment gateways, they will be using RSA algorithm. Right. Yes, such uh, right, uh, secure hashing also may also be used for certain purposes uh, uh, which requires digital signatures. Right. Um, nowadays, uh, uh, hope you are aware that uh, SHA one should not be used in any of the um, transactions, any money transaction, any monetary transactions should not involve SHA one. You have to use minimum of SHA two or SHA three, right? Uh, so in Ethereum as well as uh, Bitcoin, in Ethereum they use uh, the hashing algorithm Kachak for uh, hashing and uh, in bitcoins, they use SHA3 or SHA26 for hashing. Right? It is for it is just for a integrity, right? And the reason why RSA is not used is, you see, a 250 bit ECC key pair is almost equal to 3,072 bits RSA key pair, right? So that's the reason. So. Uh, whenever you are talking about security, you cannot say that a uh, uh, system is completely secure. In general, uh, if you are really working with some network uh, security experts, they will say you cannot secure a system 100%. Right? The only thing is you can extend the uh, scope reduce the scope of being attacked or extend the time of being attacked right uh, because of two reasons people may not attack one is if you are attacking the system if, if the cost and time required to retrieve the data is more compared to the value of the data then people will not be attacking a system. Similarly, if there is a 
if they find that it is highly secure right uh, if they find it it's highly secure usually people will not invest time to check the data from a secure system okay. so a uh, open house uh, is more prone to attacks rather than a iron house house made of iron right so these are the general cases but uh, this is completely based on uh, one's attitude the attacker's attitude right now where are the hashing used so the hashing is used to generate the account addresses the digital signature the transaction hash the receipt hash as well as the header of the block hash right and uh, the address of the accounts are 2 bit uh, the random number is generated uh, which is made by private key right then using the ecc algorithm and the private key you generate the public key right so private key is known only to you and the public key is uh, known to everyone so one of the common ex example is uh, just like your email id and password so your email id is analogous it is analogous not it is the same it is analogous to public key and your password is analogous to your private key only if you are having the combination of your email id and the password you can read a message right and you can send a message to someone and he can uh, using his public key that is his email id right so if you are you it is not required that you need to know his password to send the mail right he can open it using his email id and his password right next you will be hashing the public key which is the account which is which creates the account address right so a private key two digits uh, bit random number is generated a two digit bit random number is generated which acts as a private key from which the public key is derived using the ecc algorithm and you create the address of the account right the address of the account by using a hash function deployed over the public key which may be around 20 bytes which, which is usually a size 20 bytes you, most of you might have known that your one way hashing function will provide an output irrespective of the size of the input right a output of specific length irrespective of the size of the output and moreover there are since it is of 160 bit which is uh, 20 bytes is uh, equal to 160 bits right uh it is enough <coughs> to uh create oh, sorry uh, to um, produce the hash in a more secure manner right so there are a number of properties of hash hashing algorithms that need to be taken to uh, taken with uh, care in order to generate hash values because there are a lot of things called collision uh, so collision should not occur right uh, the birthday paradox something like that uh, happens in most of the hashing algorithms that shouldn't happen here right so the step is taken in such a way that it produces uh, a 160 bit account address so there shall not be any uh collision happening and uh, the transaction for transferring assets should be authorized non repudiable so if you are signing it you shouldn't so uh what is a uh, public key encrypted with the hashing called so it is the digital signature right so digital signature of the person right okay so in order to maintain the non repudiability 
this will be taken into account and moreover this should not be modified if you are making any modification in the hash definitely it will affect the data right at the time of verification okay. and a complete transaction verification involves timestamp verification of the timestamp verification of the norms verification of balances and sufficiency of fees so if sufficient fees is not provided the transaction will not happen for example in olden days probably some two or three years back for every enough transaction some amount was being uh, detected from your account so you may for a transaction of rupees for, let us assume for a transaction of rupees 100 you require 10 rupees to be provided as a transaction charges and you are having only 102 rupees in your bank account if you are trying to make a transaction of rupees 100 it will not happen because the fee required is not sufficient so that's the reason why the transaction doesn't happen similarly here for the transaction to get completed you have to have sufficient fee and account balances and the integrity of a block is verified by the thing that by ensuring that the block contents are not tampered the transaction are not tampered and state transition are computed hashed and verified right every state transition is computed then it is hashed and whenever it is getting verified they will take a uh, take the state transaction value again and make a hash compare it with the hashed value and uh, ensure that it is not tampered right so this is how a merkle tree looks like say it is a typical illustration but re in real time it doesn't look like that uh, it looks like uh, how i showed earlier this is the merkle root here in this one the merkle root is 60 right merkle root is 60 so at each root node so if, if you consider uh, this subtree this subtree each root node is the sum of the children right here six and four combinedly becomes ten right so similarly you take this subtree Ten plus twenty-one. It's children. It's a direct children, right? Becomes thirty-one, right? Here you take this subtree. Ten and forty-one, right? Sorry, ten and thirty-one becomes forty-one, right? So if there is any change here, or if you make any change over here or here it will be immediately reflected right it can be immediately detected similarly if there is a problem with the transaction so this this tree is for your um, for a simple understanding only but in real time the trees will be very large the trees will be very large and uh, see uh, if there is any problem with some transaction if you uh, see uh, if you could find that there is some problem with some transaction you you need to traverse it from the root and to the sum alone right you need not uh, uh, go to each and you need not visit each and every node to find whether the where the problems you just need to uh, go through the path where this summation happens right where this summation happens so your search time to find a fault in this system is reduced at least by two right it is you you will have at least you will be having only uh, you will be spending only half the time uh, spent over most other 
algorithms. If you are going for a linear search, it will uh, take n number of searches. So in, in general, when you are going for a tree, it is reduced by almost uh, n by 2 or log n. Right? So uh, depends on the size of the tree, uh, the worst case will be n log n. Right? And to establish trust in a blockchain, you secure the blockchain using protocols, validate the blocks and transactions, verify the availability of resources, and finally, execute and confirm the transactions. So now, coming to the final part of the uh, things, uh, that is the consensus algorithm. So this ensures that the data on the ledger is the same for all the nodes in the network, right? So you are maintaining a ledger, the, the values, it ensures that the values are not um, not compromised, right? So this is the, and it prevents malicious actors from manipulating the data. Um, so one who is not aware of this consensus algorithm will not be able to um, manipulate the data, will not be able to access the data. Secondly, it requires some n number of people, n number of parties to validate a transaction, right? There is a threshold value, I had said earlier. If there are k number of total endorsers and n number of, at least it requires n number of people to endorse the uh, transaction then if the number is not met with the trans transaction the transaction will not be validated so that is the uh, thing so, so if you if one person one malicious actor tries to uh, manipulate or tries to uh, insert a uh, block which is malicious in nature or probably which, is, which contains a unconfirmed transaction it may not be possible for them he need to compromise at least more than half the number of uh, endorsers the number of miners in the involved in the transaction. That is the problem with uh, a malicious attack, right? And it varies with the different implementations. And there are different types. Uh, the first type is proof of work. The second one is proof of stake. Third one, proof of elapsed time. And finally, the proof of authority. So in case of proof of work, uh, proof of work is the most deployed uh, consensus algorithm and there are a number of researchers going on uh, with the consensus algorithm how to optimize this algorithm how new algorithms can be formed how the consensus algorithms efficiency can be improved how to make a foolproof consensus algorithm there are a lot of research problems involved so if you're really interested in blockchain technology and if you are working with uh, consensus algorithms there are a, there is a very huge scope for research in it you see proof of work is widely adapted by bitcoin as well as uh, ethereum blockchains right whereas hyperledger doesn't do so hyperledger is not with a proof of work uh, whereas uh, i think it works on proof of stake Right. So we will see each and everything uh, here, right? Uh, now, when it comes for proof of work, it involves solving a computationally challenging puzzle to create a new block. For that, a lot of energy, computing energy is required, right? It is computationally challenging. So people might have heard about some uh, uh, unending loops, right? Almost uh, these problems are almost similar to those problems, and uh, in real time, uh, 
I haven't seen any such problem in my, uh, uh, which these miners are really working with. But I have heard of some people who are working in the blockchain domain. Uh, that's the reason why most people doesn't get into this proof of work concept. Uh, uh, most people do not become miners. Rather, one who knows it become a miner and creates a software that would uh, extract the uh, computational power from our system to solve this problem, right? Mm, and so, usually the concentration of mining power is located where electricity is. So, whenever you are, uh, so you, for example, uh, if we, if you are very confident about your system, you just try to install Honey Miner. Uh, it's one of the smallest software that is available for mining purpose. You just uh, try to uh, install it and start working with it. Uh, if you are, uh, if the battery charge uh, is retained for some three hours in your system, if you are using Honey software like Honey Miner, it will not uh, even uh, stand for some 30 minutes or 35 minutes. It will reduce the power because more the computational power is being utilized, the more the electricity, right? The battery's power will be pulled. Right? That's the reason why uh, this happens. So that's the reason why these are done in countries where electricity is cheap. In fact, in India, we have cheap, cheaper electricity right, uh, compared to uh, the first world countries. Uh, if you are comparing the European scenario or the US scenario, we, we, the uh, cost of electricity is uh, quite high compared to that of uh, India. Um, probably that's the reason why most people from India uh, work on this mining, not directly into mining, they put the mining software and uh, deploy a number of uh, uh, gridded GPUs uh, to accomplish this work, right? Um, so this uh, uh, definition given by Kudalski uh, security report that is proof of work is the outcome of a successful mining process and although the proof is hard to create is easy to verify so this is this must be the property it must be hard to create but it must be easy to verify right so uh, here this is the process uh, the block header element uh, it will be created so we already see have seen the seen how the element is created in share you, there will be a private key the private key will, using the private key the public key will be generated and using the public key the hash will be generated and that hash is going to be static there is no change and the, there will be a nonce value which is arbitrary right which can be generated in a different way. and uh, you need to check whether the uh, the hash of the uh, block header element and the nonce hash of the block header element and the nonce uh, is less than the function of difficulty, right? Uh, in Ethereum, we have something called the function of uh, difficulty. Uh, that is, uh, if you are taking an Ethereum transaction, there will be something uh, like uh, difficulty, uh, like a term called uh, difficulty. Probably, I think you can see it in this transaction also. What is the difficulty? No. Okay. Uh, if possible, we can you you can uh, go through that particular site. Right? You can go through blockchain.com and see the difficulty. So if it is less than the difficulty, it is solved, and the block is uh, blocked. To the, the solved winner can add the block to the blockchain, right? And if it is not. Uh, less than the function of difficulty, 
then once again you have to change the nonce right so here uh, there may be a number of uh, people who work on it i have already discussed about the concept of uh, double spending that is one of the uh, problem and the other one problem is that is called fork forking fork happens when there is a software or a hardware upgrade in the system so in ethereum there was a fork that was uh, done by 2018 because of which uh, nearly 13 billion dollars were lost i think right uh, if you are creating a fork most of the uh, earlier created blockchains may get invalidated they may become in, incompatible if there is a incompatibility because because they had to change their operating system or the software because they had to change their operating system or the software uh, this fork has happened in 2018 and because of which there was a huge loss and uh, right here uh the next one is the proof of stake so it is it is almost a generalization of work but here you have to ensure the ownership of a particular transaction so the nodes which are called to the validators will validate the transaction to earn a transaction fee here you are just verifying the ownership that's all who is having the stake major stake of, usually we will be uh, here in the major stake of the company is with uh, some it's a uh, it's a why right so you have to ensure the stake and because of which um, uh, you earn some transaction fee in proof of work you need to solve the problem to earn the transaction fee whereas here you need to just validate alone because of for uh, this reason the computational resources utilized by you will be very low than solving a problem using a program right uh, which which uses parallel computing uh, mechanisms uh, usually gpu programs are very hard it, uh, it involves a lot of parallel computing right so uh, this is quite uh, less but the transaction fee is also usually less and uh, um hyperledger uses this type of right this is proof of elapsed time right and this was developed by intel so a high, this is a hybrid uh, system which comes uh, as a random lottery and is served on a first come first served basis right uh, it is a hybridization of a random lottery with the fcfs Right. and uh, each val validator is given a random wait time right. the validator who is uh, using using the shortest wait time for a particular transaction is selected to be the leader and the leader is given the authority to create the next block right. so it is just like a uh, what you call a buzzer round in most of the quiz uh, programs right. uh, okay the next proof of authority it is almost as simple to that uh, this is used only in permission ledgers right in permission ledgers only you are using this hyperledger definitely supports this particular uh, mechanism and it uses a set of authorities or designated nodes to create a new block only people who are really authorized will be having for example in a academic institution probably a hod or a um, register will be having the uh, authority a uh, final authority some sort of uh, authority may be given to them uh, to finalize uh, financial transactions or to buy purchase new equipment similar mechanism happens here the proof of authority whereas in case of proof of stake it is proof of ownership it is almost a proof of ownership right so the key takeaways here uh, in this workshop or the concept of decentralization right uh, we are moving from a uh, world of client server technology to a decentralized technology uh, where it, you involve peer to peer uh, members to uh, accomplish tasks then you have a distributed immutable register the word immutable is very important in case of blockchains uh, see um, the 
blockchains cannot be tampered if you are trying to tamper it you will lose everything then uth so unspent transaction output uh, which is the basic block of uh, um, bitcoins and smart contracts which are the core principles that are underlying the ethereum blockchain uh, blockchain platform and evm evm is the ethereum virtual machine which uh, which is used to deploy the uh, smart contracts that are written in uh, written using uh, solidity program and merkle tree is a typical hash tree which is used to store the transactions in a blockchain and it is mostly used in uh, bitchain and ethereum blockchain and proof of work is the consensus mechanism that is being used in uh, bitcoin as well as uh, ethereum uh, where you will be solving a, a challenging puzzle in order to uh, accomplish a particular task so these are all some of the references which i have come across if, if possible you can also just uh, go through these references right there are uh, courses on uh, um, blockchains in coursera as well as in edx if you are having an institutional uh, probably you must have known that uh, edx is providing free institutional access as well as uh, uh, coursera is also providing free institutional access and you can uh, do one course per year in coursera and uh, in edx you can uh, do as many courses as there is uh, until there is a subscription there are a number of courses related to blockchains how it can be used how hyperledger is being used right you can go through all those courses if you are if you are really interested and there is a large research scope uh towards uh, the use uh, in in the domain of consensus algorithms right uh, yeah, you can work on it so if you're really interested you can go and look at it and uh, thank you uh, if there is any qu questions you can ask me and uh, i should share you the slide also the presentation uh, you can feel free to edit it you can use it anywhere everywhere right and uh, thank you sir for sharing your knowledge with us sir uh, it is the time for participants to ask your doubts to our uh, chief guest and to the sandeep and post one question from a chat box yeah. sir please refer the chat box sir. Um, I, as far as uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this is concerned, um, you must have managerial capability, capabilities, you must have system knowledge, and some specialization with uh, respect to uh, cryptography and uh, distributed systems. So there is nothing so specific uh, about it. There are a lot of people who are working in the blockchain domain uh, without a computer background itself, it is easy to understand the basic concepts, uh, provided you are strong in your uh, domain. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Mr. P. Prabhu Shankar, Assistant Professor, Department of IT, to give vote of thanks. Uh, good evening to all. It's being even pleasure to give word of thanks in one day national workshop on blockchain technologies organized by the Department of Information Technology at Ahmed Deem University. First, I would like to thank to our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. J. Ramachandran sir, for his moral support. I take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to our Vice Chancellor, the Colonel Dr. G. Thiruvasakam sir, who is our driving force in all occasions. I also express my gratitude to our respected registered sir, Dr. M. Jayaprakaswar for his guiding and all the expert, experts. I sincerely like thanks to today our chief guest speaker, Professor Dr. J.J. Adwin Jovin, 
Sri Ramakrishna Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, for this wonderful speech. On behalf of all, I would like to thank to all the participants from various institutions for this nice occasion. Finally, I thank to uh, special thanks to uh, Joint Register directors, deans, heads of the departments, faculty members, students, organizing teams to make this event grand success. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, participant, I post a feedback link in a chat box. So please find the link and fill the uh, feedback form. The certificate will be issued a couple of days.